Hey everyone! It's been a little while since we've had one of our chats. I wanted to uh, shoot this video and give you kind of an update on uh, what's been selling for us. Alright, so we talked about it in a video a few, uh, a, a few back, a few videos back. I don't know why I said it the other way. Um, but, you know, times are a little hard. Things are more expensive. People maybe aren't spending as much money as they were this time last year. Um, so what have we done? How have we adapted? What's selling, more importantly? Because I don't do a lot of what sold videos anymore. So um, you maybe don't see, you know, if you don't watch a live show, you maybe don't see some of the stuff that we sell. So I'm going to give you um, kind of an overview of what we've been selling a lot of. And we've sell a lot of this. One of the re main reasons I kind of don't do what sold videos anymore is because essentially what you're going to see here is pretty much what we sell. Maybe a few things here and there. You know, if there's a bolo or something that you guys absolutely need to know about, it will be on my Instagram or it will be on the live show or something to that effect. But in essence, this is what our store has become, um, mainly for two reasons. One, sourcing is relatively easy and inexpensive for most of these products. And two, um, you know, we have a pretty good knowledge of, of all of these things. So, you know, people say sell what you like. You do sell what you like, and we do that too. But also sell what you know, and we know this stuff very well. So we can kind of, you know, uh, sell it and source it well. So, anyways, let's get into some of the stuff that is selling. Um, before, actually, I'm sorry, before we do that, the reason our store has taken a turn into this is because we decided that, you know, when times get a little rough one of the things you can do to adapt is kind of niche down and become a seller of certain things and kind of focus in on a certain thing that you can sell a lot of and frequently um so that's what we did and that's kind of why these products that you're about to see are being sold by us so first things first we'll just get these out of the way you already know that we sell these and that's of course cabbage patch dolls yep we sold uh, two of them today. This one and this one. This is a preemie cabbage patch, and this is a redheaded girl. The preemie sold for ten, or I'm sorry, twenty dollars. So twenty dollars. Blue shipping. And then uh, the girl here sold for twenty-two dollars. So twenty-two dollars. Blue shipping. So, yeah, that'll satisfy the cabbie wave fanatics out there. But, uh, yeah, so we obviously sell those. Th those actually went to the same buyer. They're going overseas. So um, we have been selling a lot of those to the point where actually Sarah's going to have to buy more because we're running a little low on cabbage patches. I know it's hard to, to believe that by the state of the room behind me, but a lot of these are staying here. Um, and they're, you know, there for background purposes mainly. But, yeah, we are running a little low. Something else we've been selling a lot of, and that we have one of the few things that we can source at thrift stores um, that most that they don't really overprice is vintage linens. So this is like a this is a like a vintage holiday tablecloth with poinsettias on it. And it's old, um, not super old. I'd say probably 80s ish, um, but yeah, vintage linens. They're normally really really cheap. At thrift stores and they sell really well and really cheap it doesn't almost even matter what kind of patterns they are now as long as they're in decent shape this one has a few stains on it um, and uh, you know but no rips tears or anything like that uh, but yeah the older 60s linens 70s linens even like the you know frilly ones that look kind of like doilies those sell well not for tons of money this sold for ten dollars plus shipping but uh, you know it's an easy flip you typically you can get them for a dollar or less at thrift stores um and they sell really really good so vintage linens something to look out for um something else that's been selling we didn't sell this but i wanted to show it to you because we do sell a lot of these and typically they're right around the 20 to 25 dollar range um sarah makes these like she calls them value packs but they're just packages of random ephemera now we source a lot of pictures we source a lot of postcards and inevitably a lot of this stuff is normally thrown in with it 
So what we end up doing is, is we end up just lotting it all together. This is a 20 piece booklets and uh, ink blotters and ink blotters are things like, um, they're just like vintage advertising cards and so forth. Um, there's so like Yosemite National Park booklet there. Um, just random stuff are in here. Um, and these typically sell for right around $20, $25. They go priority mail. Um, and normally we can fit them in a priority flat rate. This one's a little bulky, so it might actually, well, nah. what I normally do is, is I normally put them in the priority flat rate envelope, the, the cardboard one first, and then I stuff them into a priority padded envelope. Um, and you can do that. You're used, as long as you're using it for this, these for priority mail purposes, you can do that. Um, so I put the put them in the cardboard one and then put it in a flat rate and they go for about nine bucks uh, shipped. So $25 plus $9 shipping, selling these ephemeral lots. Uh, something else we're selling a lot of, um, old books and uh, old pamphlets. This is more of a, like a, this is an old music book organ music book we've been selling a lot of them we've had these on for quite a while and up until recently they haven't really been selling but i think people are starting to buy the lower end collectibles a little bit more because you know things are more expensive now so a lot of people have been buying some old books do i recommend sourcing old books if you have the space sure and if you don't mind a slow sell yeah you could. Um, what we ran into problems with is space. When we had a lot of books, it was taking up a lot of space. So that's kind of the issue with selling old books. But if you do have the space and you have the time, old books can be pretty profitable. Um, something else that's been selling a lot um, is inexpensive clothing. This is kind of a collector's item for people. This is an American Airlines hoodie. Um, you know, not a super expensive hoodie, but something that someone maybe that collects airline memorabilia would want to collect. Um, this sold for $12 plus shipping and this same person bought two other women's shirts, one for $4 and one for $8. So inexpensive clothing, although again, not huge money makers, they can be, you know, uh, a way to make a few bucks here and there. Most of these clothing, the two other shirts, one of them was, uh, a bins fine. And the other one we had lotted in with a whole bunch of stuff that we got in an estate sale a long time ago. So these were things that we had already made money on. We knew they were lower end items, but yeah, lower end clothing items is selling relatively well. Anything I'd say $20 and under seems to be selling pretty well. And that's because the price of newer stuff has gone up. So the lower end stuff tends to sell pretty well. And our bread and butter items that we sell a lot of, you guys already know this, photographs I like this lady on the beach here uh, and then the family on the beach this is 1952 summer on the beach um, and then postcards postcards selling a lot of those um, and it seems like they're selling better than before um, not just because we're listing more, but also because, again, people are buying the lower end collectibles. Um, so you do, you know, uh, uh, our friend Mark over at SM Postcards says that postcards are recession proof. And it, he's kind of right on that because postcard collectors, for the most part, don't spend a ton of money on what they collect. This postcard in particular only sold for $5. Now we've got maybe a penny into it. But again, only sold for five bucks. So these aren't really, really expensive collectibles. So therefore they are kind of recession proof because it's really not that much money to continue collecting what you love to collect if you love to collect postcards. And the last thing we're gonna go over, Sarah sold herself. <laughs> this picture of Sarah when she was a little baby feeding her grandparents Doberman Pinscher. She sold. She had a, several copies of this. It's actually a postcard, believe it or not. Right there. Postcard. Um, she sold it for $15 plus shipping. Sarah sold a picture of herself feeding a dog planters peanuts, which I don't think you're supposed to feed dogs peanuts. But, uh, yeah. Right there. Sarah, little baby Sarah, feeding a dog. Precious. Anywho. That's kind of the things that we're selling. Hope this helps you out. Maybe gives you some ideas on what you could be selling. You know, something that you can source inexpensively and sell. Um, well, our plan is to kind of flood our store with lower end collectibles and kind of take the Walmart approach to selling things. Yeah, granted, we're not going to make as much money per item, but we're going to sell a lot of them. A lot of them in a period of time. So 
that's kind of our plan. Hopefully, and it already has been, um, hopefully it works out for us in the end. We'll find out and we will for certain update you on that. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, appreciate you hitting the thumbs up button. And if you've made it this far and haven't yet, you might as well subscribe to the channel. It's relatively entertaining. We have some live shows um, three days a week and uh, we do, you know, content like this. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you next time. Bye. Good day, sir!